What's going on guys? Big Jer back again with Warp Academy. And today, I'm super excited to talk about Massive X. As it just released, I'm sure you guys have tons of questions about this. So the crew at Warp Academy went and posted in a lot of producer groups on Facebook, finding out what your guys' most common questions were. What are you most interested in? So this might be a little bit of a longer video, but I wanna make sure I get to all those popular questions because that way you guys will have a better understanding about this new synth and to know if it's right for you. Before we get into that, let's take a listen to this sketch I made of a tune using Massive X for all the synths. Alright guys, this is going to be fun, so let's get into it. Alright, to start off, we're going to take a first look and tour of the interface. This absolutely isn't a full course, so we're going to be doing broad strokes just to get you familiar with the GUI and so you're not scared when you're looking at this new synth. I'm going to talk about some of the new and standout features of Massive X. Then we're going to see Mass Effects in action as I go through some of the patches that I made earlier. Finally, we're going to take a look and answer some of the most common questions we polled for. All right, let's get into it. So at first, this could be sort of an intimidating synth, but let's break down the sections so we know what we're looking at. That way, we're not so scared of it. So, like any synth, we need to start our sound somewhere. So, we have our oscillator section. So, in this synth, you can have up to five oscillators. There are two primary wavetable oscillators, each augmented with a phase modulation oscillator. And it's also possible to have up to three additional oscillators by using insert oscillators via the insert effects section. Right next to that, we have our two noise generators. As you might expect, we have our filter section here. And right next to that, we have our insert effects, A, B, and C. Insert effects can be placed at various points in the signal chain through the routing tab, which we'll look at in a second. Next up, we have our amp, which is just gonna control the level of the overall synth. And then we've got our unit effects. The unit effects are the final stage the signal passes through before reaching the main output. So you could think of these as your master effects. To the far left, we've got our global pitch and glide. On the top row, we've got 16 assignable macros, as well as our pitch bend and modulation wheel. Down at the bottom, we have a pretty robust modulation section. Starting off with what's on screen, we've got E standing for envelopes. Envelope one will be our amp envelope, controlling the shape of the entire sound, while the rest of the modulators are interchangeable. We have modulation envelopes, exciter envelopes. We also have switcher LFOs, random LFOs, and then we've got our performers, as well as trackers. All of these modulators are drag and drop. As soon as I grab onto the cross, you can see that all the boxes open up and I could drag them to any one of those. If I go down and tap on the routing tab, you'll see that this is pretty intense and could be a little confusing at first, but at the same time, it's going to allow us a lot of extra capabilities that wouldn't be there if there was set routing. Remember before I said that you could have insert effects anywhere. So let's go up to A and let's add ourselves a bit crusher. Now notice that A is here in the signal chain, okay? I could reroute this if I wanted to, but notice I could have easily put it on B or C. As we explore routing and Massive X more, you'll find that this is a very flexible routing system, allowing you to put these insert effects almost anywhere you want. Right next to the routing tab is our voicing tab, and this controls all of our voicing. And to the far right, you'll find your unison control with a few extra surprises, which we'll talk about in a minute. All right, so to me, the first new or standout feature would be the trackers. And they're gonna be found down here at the bottom. We've got one, two, three, and four. If I select it, you'll see the tracker display. Over to the left, you'll see a source list of engageable options. We're gonna use note pitch. This means that the pitch or key we play will determine the intensity of our modulation. Let me show you what I mean. 
So I'll drag this guy over to our phase modulation. And if we go ahead and engage phase modulator on oscillator one, let's just hear what it does before we modulate it. All right, wicked. In fact, I'll just kick it up one more of these guys here so we can hear it a little bit louder or more pronounced. Great. So you can see in the middle, this is the key range that we're playing. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little node there and bring it all the way to the bottom. And then I'll bring another node here so we can make it so the lower note we play we don't hear as much phase modulation, but the higher note we play, we hear more phase modulation. Before we do that, I have to go ahead and turn my tracker up here so I get a little bit of modulation. You'll notice that it's in buy mode here since it's going purple and white. I'm just gonna go uni mode so I just get the purple. So let's go ahead and hear what this sounds like when I play a lower note. Okay, no phase modulation. Let's try a higher note. This is definitely gonna make your synth a lot more expressive and I can't wait to experiment with it more. All right, so let's go ahead and disengage this tracker. There's gonna be two ways to do it. I could either go over to where it was assigned, right click and hit delete, or go over to the actual module itself, this tracker one, right click on that, and then either mute or in this case, delete the connections. And then I will disengage phase modulation to oscillator one since I wasn't originally using it. So. Let's go ahead and talk about the second standout or new feature. To me, it's gonna be the routing. And I know we talked about it a little bit earlier, but let's take a slightly closer look. If you guys remember the original Massive, you'll remember it had a similar routing system, giving you a bit more flexibility than other synths on the market. This takes it to the next level. We've got a lot of extra control, including feedback loops, filter modulation, phase modulation auxiliary, as well as your insert effects. You also have mod one and two. So let's take a listen to what this sound sounds like again. It's a full on sub. And if you notice, there's a pretty cool noise effect in the background, and that's being created by this jet noise from Noise Oscillator 1. If I right click my Oscillator 1 here, I wanna go ahead and mute that so we can hear just what the noise is doing. Awesome. So for me, I really liked that noise, but I didn't want it to get in the way of my sub. So what I did was I took advantage of an insert effect. So I went ahead, popped on insert effect here, and I used utility. And utility is going to give us high pass and low pass filters. This is actually amazing, meaning we have utility filters anywhere we want in the signal, in addition to our full on filter section. So if you can see here, I went for high pass and I rolled off a bit of the low frequencies, okay? So it fit in with my sub better. So now I'll turn my sub back on. And you can hear that these two guys aren't fighting at all. This is just one simple way of how powerful this routing system is. And I personally can't wait to explore it more. For me, the last new or standout feature would be the wavetable modes. The wavetable oscillator operates in one of 10 different modes, and these determine the readout of the wavetables. You could think of these wavetable modes as sub-engines to the main wavetable engine. Each mode contains unique parameter controls that affect the way this sub-engine behaves, drastically changing your sound as you switch between the modes. Those are my top new or standout features, but with all the cool things Massive has to offer, I've probably just scratched the surface. Let's see Massive in action now as we take a deeper look into some of these presets I made. But just before we get going, I'd like to invite you to join the community by hitting the subscribe and activate notifications. That way you won't miss a beat and you'll get the heads up on all the things as soon as we post them. Alright, so I know we've been looking at this sub, but there's a few more things that I want to call your attention to. So, 
check this out. Notice how I have assigned a few things to macros here, but they're not all assigned in the same way. And this is pretty interesting. So if I want, I can go ahead and drag a macro over to a specific parameter, and then I could set its minimum and maximum value. And this will mean if I have it all the way at the bottom, it's all the way down at the bottom of this red. And if I have it all the way at the top, that means it's all the way at the top of our red line. And that's one way to use this macro, and that's great. But another way to use it is actually just dragging it onto the knob. And I did that over here on the glide time with macro three. I'll do it over here on the frequency knob so you could see. Check this out. If I grab this four macro and drop it in the middle, notice then it becomes the knob. And that's really interesting and neat. And I think that's a pretty cool way to use macros. So the other thing that I wanted to show you was this really cool distortion module. It's over here. This is the NLL or the nonlinear labs. And this is going to be a full on distortion overdrive module. And usually when I'm doing subs inside of a synth, I have to bring them out of the synth, print them, and then start processing them with distortion. But the way this runs, it actually allows me to get a really dope sound and never having to leave the synth. In fact, if you see at the bottom, I don't have really any processing on this at all. Just a little limiting to limit my output and a little side chaining. Let's listen to what this sounds like. This again is a full on distortion overdrive unit. And if you engage this bottom parameter, you'll have cabinet variations at your disposal. This is a really great feature and it really made making this 808 enjoyable and easy. And it's allowing me to get some different textures on my 808 that I wouldn't normally have gotten. Finally, the last thing I did was head over to my voicing tab. I made sure that I was in mono mode and I adjusted my glide time here. And one final thing I can call your attention to is over here on the engine setup tab, the reset oscillator option. This will reset the starting point of the oscillators with every note that's played. This will give me the most consistent sub sound. And that's pretty much my sub. So before we jump into those questions that you guys asked, I've got one more sound that I wanna show you. It's not my favorite sound that I created. It's not even the most interesting sound, but the component that I wanna show you is super interesting and worth the time. So we're gonna take a look at the super saw stab. It's a real basic super saw, but there is a little extra juice in there. First thing I wanna show you is we are just playing one note here, and that's important for what I'm gonna show you. And let's listen to it and hear what we hear. So clearly I'm hearing a chord. Let's jump into Massive X and see how we're getting that chord. So as we glance through this preset, you can see that there's nothing special happening. The dual wave tables are just kicking out basic shapes. We're going through a little bit of a filter, not doing a whole lot, adding a little bit of distortion, and then we are adding a dimension expander, reverb, and DQ. But that's not the part that I wanna talk about. All right, let's go ahead up to the voicing tab, and then you can see we're gonna be taking advantage of the unison section. Here's where you add your voices to your oscillators. So I've added four voices, you could add up to six. Let me go ahead and turn this chord morph to the left and let's listen to what it sounds like with your usual unison. As expected, let's go ahead and turn it to the right and see what happens now. If I go up to this drop down menu, you can see here to the left, there's two modes. There's harmonize mode and there's chord mode. And we're in chord mode right now. You can see the chord fader below. And these are quantized to the 12 channels that you see. Each taking your unison voices and making them a chord based on the minor scale, since that's what we have set. So the first question was, if you already own the original Massive, would it make sense to upgrade to Massive X? 
Well, stated by Native Instruments, MassiveX and Massive will coexist, ensuring ongoing Massive compatibility with your existing DAW projects, meaning that these are two separate synths. They will slightly resemble each other, but they are completely different, and MassiveX has been built from the ground up. It's not just Massive with extra features. You may also want to know, will the original Massive presets open in MassiveX? And as I said, Massive X is an entirely new instrument with new features and completely new sound engine. So there's going to be no cross compatibility between Massive X and the original Massive. So the next question was, what has Native Instruments done to improve the workflow from the original Massive to compete with today's market? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the original Massive and Massive X will slightly resemble each other. But in my opinion, everything has been upgraded to the point where it has to be called a new instrument. Things like the routing tab. We had a routing tab in the original Massive, but now we've got this crazy awesome routing section in Massive X. So same, but now Massive X has taken that idea and exploded it into something much more robust. And this will follow suit with all the modules. The performer's been upgraded. The LFO section's been upgraded. The envelope section's been upgraded. Not to mention all the new wavetables, filters, and effects that come with Massive X. So in my opinion, Massive X is the next evolutionary step. It's still Massive, which is why they retained the name, but it is a new generation. The third question was, how does Massive X stack up against other synths in today's market? Well, I'm glad that it's not just another wavetable synth trying to chase Serum. From all the examples I gave you and from all the things we've talked about, I'm sure you would agree that this is a new design. This is something fresh and something that I'm excited to explore. So I think it stacks up well against other synths. I had a great time using it. I've only been using it a short time, but I was able to make some pretty cool sounds. My 808s are sounding better than ever, and it felt pretty cool to use. So I think Massive X is going to stack up really well in today's market, plus I think it's going to have a super long life. I'm going to go ahead and put questions four and five together because the answer is the same. So question four was, what features, if any, does Massive X have that Serum does not? Can it do things that Serum cannot? And question five was, could Massive X be an alternative to Serum? Again, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot, but being a brand new synth, it is going to be able to do a lot of things that Serum can't do. The first thing that comes to mind is the routing section. Serum is very linear in the sense that you really can't reroute things too much in Serum. And in Massive X, you have the ability to move different modules around and place insert effects freely. Serum cannot do this because Serum doesn't have routing or insert effects. The way Massive X has expanded its wavetable mode is, again, a game changer. Something very different than we're used to, and I bet it's going to have a lot of really cool sounds in it. Things like performers won't be found in Serum. You might be able to say, well, it's sort of the same thing, and yes, it is sort of the same thing, the way that Serum allows you to draw in your curves, but it's not a performer. And as we explore performer, we'll be able to see that there's a lot of power there, more than just the ability to draw in your own LFO shape. Plus, the way that Massive X handles the unison with the harmonized mode and the chord mode is quite different and unique, and that's not something that you'll be able to find in Serum either. I'm sure there's a lot more, but these are the things that stand out to me. But more to the point, I think the answer to your question is being a completely different synth, there are plenty of things that Massive X is going to be able to do that Serum just can't. Just like there are things that Serum can do that Massive X cannot do. And that makes sense because they're completely different synths. So rather than thinking of Massive X as a possible alternative to Serum, think of it as a partner to Serum and a new way to expand your sonic palette. The final question was, is Massive X just another revamp synth, or is it going to add new value, pushing the conceptual boundaries of synthesis? Well, I think you already know my answer. From all the things we've talked about, all the examples I've given you, I think Massive X is anything but a revamp synth. This is a new guy with new potential. I'm hoping there's a brand new genre hiding in there somewhere. We need it. So I don't think Massive X is going to help being able to push the boundaries of synthesis. With all these new features and all this new potential possibilities, I think that Massive X is going to earn itself its own individual spot in the ranks of the modern day synth. 
All right, guys, that about wraps it up for the highlights and new features of Massive X. And we covered a lot of questions that you guys asked in those producer groups. I hope this was interesting and educational. And if you guys want any more information on any of these points or anything else on Massive X, please let us know in the comments. All right, until next time, see ya.